Hello and welcome to my talk. I want to talk to you today about uh, our services that we deploy to our customers, our SaaS applications we do, and how we actually track and manage you know, system data and, and, and the application that runs those applications um, as, as metadata. Or I guess we're all living in a services world. Uh, hi, my name is Jim Walker. I'm Principal Product Evangelist here at Cockroach Labs, and that's my talk. Um, so let's just start here and let's talk a little bit about metadata. Metadata, you know, ultimately I think about like kind of three types of metadata. That's kind of high level, right? Like, you know, it's data that is created by the thing, uh, data that runs the thing, uh, or data that is used by the thing. Um, and, and typically, you know, these are kind of the three different ways I think. I, I really kind of break it down into, uh, I, I like to break it down into the things that it runs and uses and then the things that it's created. And so let's, let's talk about that. You know, our applications, uh, the systems we build, uh, ex they put off a lot of exhaust. Um, you know, there's just a lot of data coming off these things. Uh, there's log files, um, there's usage, there's machine data that's going on. And, and typically this kind of, that data is kind of like time-based and forensic-based. And it's there so that we can do some sort of exploration into the system or, or to troubleshoot things, uh, to to perform incident response, you know, to, to really analyze the system itself. and so. That's one type of metadata, and typically that type of metadata, I see it landing in things like you know a time series page, like a time, like a time scale or something like that, right? Or you know, you know, we see people using that in like say Prometheus and whatnot, right? And so like, I think that's one side of the data. There's this whole other world of metadata that's actually pretty important for our applications, and it's it's the user data, it's the login, it's the identity of people who are using our system, it's all of the various different tenants that have an instance of our service. It's it's the things that they're doing. It's it's their credentials say they need to log in and interact and engage with other systems. Um, and, and this is all the kind of stuff that helps kind of, it runs the system, right? Um, and it's the same place where we collect like billing data, uh, we, we think about usage and interactions. And this is the stuff that we're using to, 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 to charge people for usage of our services. That's where we control features. Uh, and, and so, I think about metadata around our applications and services really these two times. It's like kind of exhaust, the stuff that we use kind of like coming out one side and then the stuff that the app like uses, right? And so if I think about metadata use cases and, and you know, we talked to lots of different customers. We see people using Cockroach for like data warehousing, financial planning, uh, storage system, customer fulfillment, feature flagging, uh, you know, Launch Darkly is one of our customers, um, identity management, you know, user profiles. and. So when I kind of pulled together this slide, I started thinking through like, what are these, what are the various different workloads where, where things are kind of like, not the application that the, not the data that the application is using, but, but stuff that's around it. This is what I came up with and I started writing these things. And, and there's one thing that came about as I started writing these things. And I kind of noticed is that, you know what, every single one of these things is a service. And, and our customers who are using Cockroach are typically using, they're, they're deploying their software as a service. And I think we're all doing that. That's really kind of the way in which we all function today, right? So we're gonna talk about SaaS applications and we're gonna talk about services and, and how Cockroach can actually help in, in, that, in that environment. But hopefully this is just valuable from a general point of view as well. So application delivery. So back in the day when, when I was coding and delivering applications, you know, we'd build an application, you know, we had a, a whole team that was you know, building make files and we'd do these builds and you know, we'd, we'd get the software together to be this big thing and, and we would release it. And it'd be like once a year, maybe, maybe twice a year. I mean, if you were lucky, right? Um, customer would buy it, they download that, uh, they install it, and then they just start using it. Um, you know, this is a tricky kind of setup, um, but it was great and it worked. And, and I'm not saying it's bad, it's just that that's the way things used to work, right? And, 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 it, and it led to a lot of different challenges, right? Like how do we get new releases out to people and, and keep people up to date? How do we have any insight into actually what's going on? How do we control how they're using it? Am I passing a CD along to another person or the bits and the license key over to somebody? Um, you know, there's this kind of very limited ability to gain insight into how people are using things. And, and more importantly, it's like you buy the whole thing or not, and it's kind of a one-time purchase, right? And so this old way worked for a very long time, but, but ultimately we've kind of transitioned into this new way where we are kind of this, this services-based uh, economy today, right? Where everything is kind of consumed as a service. So we're still building applications, but today we publish them. We publish them to, say, a cloud provider. Our customers then subscribe to the software, which is actually huge, huge value. Um, Subscription-based revenues and, and the way that we think about those things in our organizations. You know, one day we didn't have subscription-based revenues. I think today we just think about it as a default. 
anybody who's kind of starting a company, we just think subscriptions, you know, that's the way it is. It just wasn't that way. And so customers now subscribe to your software and then we, and then we provision the service to them um, wherever, they, wherever they need be and, and however they want to consume that. Now, this new way actually allows us to address a lot of these, these challenges that we had in the old way. Um, and it gives us this really level of insight into how people are using our system. Um, it allows us to kind of or elegantly, you know, upgrade and release new features. And, and really, ultimately, it gives us a platform for a very direct interaction with our customers. And that direct interaction is really kind of, I think, probably one of the most powerful assets of us now delivering software as a service because we get insight into what they're doing. But we're also allowed to have a conversation through the tools and the services that we're actually providing for people. And I think that's what's really interesting. And I, and I love that we've, we've transitioned from this old way um, to the new way. It just makes sense. However, there's a lot of new challenges in the new world. There's always challenges. That's why we're all employed, I guess, right? Um, our customer expectations are increased. They just want, they want a better, they want a service. They, it can't go down. Um, you know, if this thing is hosted, you know, the, the always on resilient nature of these things is actually your important. Is it going to scale? Is it going to perform very well? Um, you know, ultimately, I think they want consumption based pricing as well. I think consumers don't want to pay for things they don't use. Um, but but also, you know, your customers are everywhere. So how do you get software into hands of users, you know, when they're all over the planet and, and make sure that they're all having, you know, a, a great experience with your software? I think this is really what it's all about. Now, doing this is not something that's simple. Um, you know, typically as, as developers, you know, we build the thing and we're really good at the thing that we want to build and the business logic and the stuff that's in there. It's all really great. It makes a whole lot of sense to us. Uh, what, what would may not be, you know, the primary for us is like, oh my God, how do I actually do this? How do I actually, you know, understand transactions is the transactional operational side of things. How do I make it available to everybody with low latency? You know, that, that, those are complex challenges. Um, and it's, it's not what you built. And so, you know, is there a better way of doing this? Well, ultimately, I think when we think about this, this metadata layer, what we're really talking about is like this, this transactional operational store that's running the application itself. And ultimately, underneath that is a database. And the database, I contend, can provide a lot of value in this context. But it has very, very, very clear requirements. Uh, number one, it should run anywhere. You shouldn't be subjected to one environment because then you're subjected to one environment. Um, and it should basically provide this kind of rock star experience for your users. It should, you know, guard against downtime. Um, it should, you know, provide low latency transactions to anybody anywhere they are on the planet. It should scale to meet the needs of your customers, no matter where they are. And ultimately, I think if, when I think about, you know, these these transactional operational stores that run, you know, any kind of system like this, you know, a, a point of sale, you could think of it as very similar. It's ultimately the relational data model, um, and it's it's you know. How do I get transactions and referential integrity uh, and, and these sort of things and ensure data integrity? And so, you know, ultimately kind of these are the some of the core requirements of this, this metadata kind of transactional layer that sits under our services and our SaaS applications today. And so ultimately, you know, Cockroach is used as, as this metadata plane by, by lots of different organizations. This is a fairly generic reference architecture, but it shows, I mean, it's like, look, you have a bunch of users that are accessing a system um, typically what organizations do is set up a proxy so they can, you know, route a user to their particular instance of that service, whatever the service it is that, that you're actually going out. And then there's a whole layer of kind of metadata services that are handling these transactions. Like your, your app is that service and, and it, you know, a tenant is assigned to those things. And then there's these metadata services, all of that interacting with, you know, an instance of Cockroach DB that's spanning multiple different data centers. Here it is, multiple different Kubernetes clusters. This could be complete different data centers different regions if you want, right? So we have one single logical database that's actually ensuring that you're gonna get low latency transactions and you're gonna to scale to meet your users no matter where they're at. Um, and then integrate with things like, you know, data warehousing with real-time integrations and these sort of things, right? And so, you know, one single logical database really, really powerful as kind of one consistent metadata plane. Um, you don't wanna do this all in one data center and have everybody kind of going to one thing. You, you These things typically will fall over, right? And so. Um, huge value in actually using Cockroach in this configuration. So <clears throat> uh, hopefully you can go out and try it today. Um, if you want to, you can actually go out and create a Cockroach DB instance right now. We have a serverless instance. It's a it's a beta. So if you just want to play with Cockroach a little bit, uh, we have dedicated instances that allow you to actually do this whole multi-region configuration if you want to. Um, and just go out and start that right now. Um, but one final thing, um, as a thank you for joining my talk, uh, we published our CockroachDB Definitive Guide with O'Reilly uh, uh, just, just a couple weeks ago. 
thank God we got a cockroach on the front cover of the book. Um, but we published that, and, and we're giving away a free copy of that book right now to, to anybody who signs up. So head on over to cockroachlabs.com, and you can actually go out and download a, a free copy of the book and start playing with Cockroach DB today. So um, once again, I'm Jim. Thank you very much for joining my talk. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>